Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video. Now in today's one we're going to be having a look at a phone, obviously, but instead of a smartphone we're going to be having a look at a feature phone. Now feature phones are something I rarely cover on this channel, at least the newly released ones. The last time I did a feature phone review it didn't really go as good as I had hoped, so now with that being erased from history uh, let's do a refresh, start over, and let's have a look at a 2021 feature phone that is also rugged. This sample was provided to me by AGM, so a massive thanks to them for sending this out to me. I really, really do appreciate it, of course. If you are interested in this item, there is a link down in the description below. It's not an affiliate link, so I will not receive any commission from any sales. I'm also not being paid for this video, and all opinions are mine. AGM has been on my radar for quite a while now. I actually do own an AGM A8 Mini, but I don't have a battery or a back cover for this. AGM pretty much focuses on building rugged devices, but I kind of should have asked AGM if they still had parts for the A8 Mini, but oh well, we have this one to have a look at, so let's begin with the pricing and the specs. So the phone we are looking at is the World Premier AGM M7 4G Louder Sound Rugged Phone 1GB 8GB 2500 mAh Mobile Phone Waterproof Type-C Touchscreen Feature Phone. As of recording this video, it is sitting at $132 Australian, and it also offers free shipping. I'll show it all converted to different currencies here for you all for reference. The main place where they sell their phones is AliExpress as well, if you didn't know. So this is their official store on AliExpress. So in this picture, you can see three options. There's the Russian keyboard, the American version, and the European version. So the Russian keyboard is just a Russian keyboard. The American version and the European version are slightly different. And the only difference between the two is the network compatibility. So when I get to the specifications, make sure you take note of the American bands and the European bands as there is a slight difference. The phone was released on the 30th of April this year, so I may be one of the first handful of people to truly take a look at this phone and be reviewing it. Hopefully I can bring you all a lot of detailed information for this phone within this video. As always, there are timestamps integrated into the video as well as the description, so you can skip along if you get a bit bored at a certain part. So with this being a feature phone, what about its specifications? Let's take a brief look over them. The model is the AGM M7 in all black. This phone is IP68, IP69, and MIL STD 810H certified, meaning it's pretty much good for any environment. It will survive drops, plunges into water, swift amounts of dust, freezing cold temperatures, blistering hot environments, and so on. I think you get the general idea that it will survive anywhere. The dimensions of this device and the weight of it are listed here, but it seems to have a bit of extra weight to it, due to it being rugged. The processor is the MediaTek MT6739, which is a pretty low-end processor. However, since this isn't a flagship and really is just primarily meant for a rugged device and not like a full-on smartphone experience, it would be more than enough to handle most day-to-day -day tasks with this. In the RAM department, we only have one gigabyte, and storage-wise, we only have eight gigabytes, but this can be expanded via microSD card up to 128 gigabytes. The display is a 2.4-inch QVGA LCD screen with touch functionality. It's likely protected by glass, but it doesn't specify if it's Gorilla Glass or anything like that. It may be a plastic screen, I'm not too sure. Our camera setup is very, very basic, as to be expected, with just a 2-megapixel one on the back and a 0.3-megapixel one on the front. The battery in this is rated at 2,500 milliamp hours. It does not have fast charge, you can buy an optional dock to just throw the phone into while you're on the job or something like that. Otherwise, you can charge it via the Type-C USB port. The OS is Android 8.1, however, it is simplified. There is no App Store. Combining the specs plus what we know of the OS so far, it will just do the job if you need it for work and nothing else. We will be having a look at the OS just to see how simplified it actually is. Our connectivity options are just Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz, Bluetooth 4.2, and that's pretty much it. There's no NFC and no other sensors in this device according to the spec list. I guess for the price, there are some cutbacks. Unlike the Doogee S86 that I had a look at, which pretty much had everything, this is more simplistic and is just rugged and that's pretty much it. No NFC, no fingerprint scanner, no wireless charging, no headphone jack, a lot is missing. But once again, this is targeted towards a specific audience and for its price point, I guess it is what it is. The speaker in this is where things get really loud. We have a massive 3.5 watt, 35 millimeter waterproof speaker in this. This probably would be the biggest speaker in a phone I have seen yet. The 2019 Engage I had a look at had a fairly big speaker in it, but hopefully this one will have BFG division going at the loudest we have ever heard. Now we come down to the networks. This should support most major networks around the world, but here's the bands listed on screen here for you all. Please make sure that you check with your network providers to make sure your country supports these bands. As I always say, I'd hate for you to buy this phone and then you finally receive it and then you put a SIM card in it and you can't get service in your country. So just pay attention to these bands first before even thinking about purchasing the device. 
and we have support for two nano sims as well as a micro SD card and you can use both sim cards and a micro SD card all at the same time in this phone. Finally within the box we get the phone itself, a power adapter, a type C cable, a type C to 3.5mm headphone jack adapter and a manual book. Now I'm not sure if the charger is for Australia or not at this point in time, hopefully it is. If not, they've probably provided a travel adapter within the box. That's the main specifications of the AGM M7. There's honestly not a lot going on here. And the same for the listing. So let's just take a quick look through it to learn a little bit more about this phone. So going to the top of the listing, Still missing calls in noisy environment? Introducing the AGM M7 Rugged Mobile Phone with 3.5 watts powerful speaker. You will never miss a call. Meant to be durable, solid, and multi purpose, the AGM M7 is drop proof, dust proof, and waterproof. With military standard 810, powered by Android Smart Operation System, you can use front and rear cameras, TikTok, Facebook with stable 4G frequency bands for enhanced connectivity, VOLTE and dual SIM support. You can also customize the side key as you please, push it to talk, play your favorite music or activate your torch. Battery 2500 milliamp hour long lasting usage. Easily plug in with either side type C port. Charging docks are also available. You will never miss a call again with AGM M7. We can see the main features listed here, like the RAM and storage, the battery, the Type-C port, reversible connector that's been tested over 10,000 times, and the loud sound. And you can see on the back there, the speaker is pretty big, so I can't wait to test that. Here is all the specifications just listed here within the listing. If you want to pause here and have a look at it, feel free, but I'm pretty sure the specifications that I've already went through are listed here. It does say stuff about applications and a torch and all that, but once we get the phone powered on, we'll get to see it all anyways. Now there's a note that's on AliExpress that says this, Brazil, please choose European and other areas version. Only defined input languages are supported. AGM M7 has no app store. I'm going to try to install some applications off my SD card, but I have a feeling I won't be able to do it, but I'll give it a go, see what happens. Now the next picture here says that we'll never miss a call with the world's biggest phone speaker. As I said, I'm really excited to see how loud that thing's going to be. It does support Facebook, WhatsApp, and TikTok. I mean, I guess if you're on a job and you want to do a funny TikTok with the front 0.3 megapixel camera, which is probably going to capture video at like 176 by 144, uh, yeah, feel free, feel free. We have the certifications listed there as well as the 4G frequency bands, which aren't listed, but I listed before. Get the most out of your sound. Equipped with a powerful sound system, the AGM M7 produces an overall dominant loud audio experience coupled with a mighty 3.5 watt speaker output. Once we tear this down, we'll get to see how big the speaker actually is. But this is one of the main selling points of the phone is this speaker. And one of the main things that I do within my videos is do a speaker test, so it kind of makes sense. Smart operation system. AGM M7 runs smart operation system and supports Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok, Skype, Zello, and more. Zello was on the Doogee. Still don't know what it is. I should Google it. All the certifications listed there showing that it's shockproof, dustproof, resistant to extreme temperatures, and waterproof. Basically, in my durability test, I'll be doing a drop test and submerging it. Connectivity, the AGM M7 comes with 4G frequency bands for enhanced connectivity, VO LTE and dual SIM support. This gives you access to 4G, 3G and 2G connections. There's a guy in a workshop just writing down stuff in a notebook on his AGM M7 just there. Charging simplified. With the USB Type-C port on the AGM M7, you don't need to figure out which end of the cable is right. You just plug in and your AGM gets charging. You could also get your hands on a desktop charging dock. The dock actually needs to be purchased separately and I don't know how much it is, but I don't think it'd be too much. It's just a bit of plastic with some contacts on there. It honestly would make sense to have this included with the bundle. Customize as you please. The function of the side key on the AGM M7 is customizable. You could use it to access an app like the push to talk feature on Zello or play music or access the camera or activate your LED torch. Another picture here just going over the quick specs like the traditional keypad coupled with the touchscreen, which I'll remind you again, it's a 2.4 inch QVGA touchscreen. So I'm not too sure how useful it's going to be, but we'll see how we go. The high volume removable 2500 milliamp hour battery, LED flashlight situated on top of the device, supports video call, Wi-Fi, FM, and Bluetooth. So it does have an FM radio, there you go. Comfortable and anti-skid grip. So like if you throw it along concrete, will it stop or will it just keep 
going along and keep rolling and rolling and rolling. Who knows? One click to clear all DNS. Long press the key for three seconds. Okay, well, we can try that. And then we just get a photo of what's in the box, which is the cable, battery, charger, little adapter, the phone, the books, and the box. That's it. Well, the box doesn't come in the box. The box is, you know what I mean. And as I said, that's it. That's the listing. There's not a lot here. So without further ado, We've got a parcel. This took four days to arrive to me from China to Australia, so that's pretty good. I think on AliExpress they just send it via normal, regular shipping, but they have sent it to me via DHL. I'm pretty sure that's an option in the listing. Go ahead and just... Whoop. And we have a box inside of the bag. And then within said box... We have... An advertising brochure, which we'll have a look at. Actually, dear friend, thanks to your support to AGM Mobile, we have specially selected a gift from you. It's a pair of JBL customized Bluetooth sports headphones developed by AGM and JBL. Hope you like it. May peace, happiness, and good fortune be with you always. Thanks and best wishes, AGM team. That's kind of nice. So you get free headphones with this. And they're sports ones as well. I don't know what the specifications of them are going to be, if they're dust resistant and all that sort of thing, but I would say they probably would be. But we'll test these during the review. Well, thanks, AGM and JBL. I didn't know you were going to be sending me extra. That's kind of nice. So is that it here? Oh, yep, there they are there. There's the JBL headphones just there. Earphones, sorry. They come in a nice little baggy just like so. And just opening them up... We can probably see the model number on here somewhere. Oh, it's an AGM headset, wireless waterproof in-ear. So it's got a remote on there with the volume keys and the power on button. Ooh, hello. Nice, look at those. JBL, right there to fit in your ear, nice and comfortable. And then, yeah, we've got the little remote just here. It's AGM branded. And yeah, there's the little charging port just there, which is micro USB. Yeah, it's micro USB, so they don't give you a cable with it. So you've got to find a micro USB cable, because the cable that comes with the phone is Type-C. But I'm fairly sure you'll have a micro USB cable laying around. Um, but yeah, we'll just plug that back in there. AGM, there's a little mic just there. And the little buttons have a rubber texture just to them. Reminder, please keep the USB cap closed to prevent water or sweat. I will do that. Uh, but yeah, they look pretty good, and they've got a bit of weight to them, especially in here as well. So we will test these during the audio portion of this review. And they also include extra ear tips as well. In case they don't fit in my stupid ears, I can just put them on and hopefully they'll fit. But I was not expecting to get them. I thought it was just the phone itself, but there you go. And finally, we got the little box. That's it just there. AGM, little sticker just there, the little logo. Uh, nothing going on, pretty much. Tremendous sound system, high volume warning. Should I hold it up to my ear and play BFG Division at full ball? Maybe. Who knows? We do have an IMEI sticker just on the bottom there with the serial number. The color is black. And that's pretty much it. All right, we've got to break the seal. Seal has been broken. And there we go. There it is there. Oh, yeah, that's that's got heft to it. Oof. Okay, so we do get the Type-C to 3.5mm adapter, Type-C USB cable, charger, which is a European one. They haven't included a travel adapter, but that's okay. And we have the user's manual as well as the warranty booklet just there. How much warranty do you get with this? Is it 12 months or two years? I'm not too sure. The manual, AGM, built to endure, opens like that. All the functions are there. If I do need to come back to this, I will. This is pretty much just a quick start guide just to get going and tells you how some of the features work, but I'm pretty sure I'll work it all out. Let's take a look at the phone. There we go. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Here, Nokia 5140i. Same thing, isn't it? It's exactly the same. Hey, I actually did like the Nokia 5140. It's actually a really, really cool phone, and it was a rugged one as well. And yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here. So at the front of the phone, we've got a little front-facing camera just there, our earpiece just there. We have our keyboard just here with the two option buttons, D-pad, OK button, call, call end, and our numeric keyboard. For texting, I wonder if an on-screen keyboard does come up. That would be interesting. Then, of course, our 2.4-inch QVGA touchscreen just there. So I just want to see what's protecting the screen, if it's plastic or glass. And it is glass, so that is good. Hopefully, during the durability test, it actually survives when I drop it, because I'm going to be dropping it face down like that. 
it is protected by these lips going around the phone, so you should be okay. The sides of the phone have a bit of a rubber grip going onto them, and on that side we can see the customizable button. On the top is the LED torch. On the other side we have nothing there. Uh, at the bottom we have the little contacts for the optional dock, and under the little charging door just there is the Type-C USB port. So I'll just put that back on there like that. And then having a further look on the back, this is made of plastic just here. But there is the speaker. I think that there takes the cake of being the biggest speaker I've had a look at on a phone. We do have the two megapixel camera just on the back there. And uh, that's pretty much it. We can just go ahead and remove the back cover, like so. And there you go. So you've got to remove this piece here, like so, for the waterproof protection. And then we have the battery inside of there, the 2500 milliamp hour one. It does have some little protective film on it so it doesn't switch on during transport. And inside of the phone, we have the IMEI information, serial numbers, as well as saying that it has one gig RAM and eight gig ROM. The model is M7, the color is black. We have dual nano SIMs and the micro SD card slot just there. So I'm gonna go ahead and populate these and we are gonna switch on this phone and see what it's capable of. All right, that's on there. That's all back down. That's all closed, all good, there we go. So thickness wise, I'd probably say two iPhone SE 2020 stacked together would probably be about the thickness of this, maybe a little bit more. But I'll tell you what, it does feel comfortable in the hand though, and all the keys have a nice click and feel to them, so that's good. All right, well, let's go ahead and switch it on. If it's got charge, yes it does, there we go. I'm kind of expecting this to scare me with the loud boot up sound. Is it going to be loud? Oh, okay. Well, that was kind of easy. Okay. Well, uh, we have Telstra, we have 4G, and there's some people just sitting there having a good time. So I'll just unlock it and press star. There we go. We've unlocked the phone. There's a person hiking in the middle of nowhere, uh, having a good time. Cool. So straight off the bat, obviously, the display is QVGA. It's not the best display ever, but for a feature phone that's rugged, this will be more than enough. But touch. Hey, there you are. Oh, God, TikTok. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. It does work. And that's how you lock it. Let's test the torch out. Oof, okay. It's got a bit of a blue tint to it, actually, but that's fairly bright. Let me just sort of point it around. Yep, that'll be good. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> I was not expecting that to happen. Oh, ah, uh, that speaker's loud. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Oh, that caught me off guard. Holy moly. There we go. I'm going to turn the volume down. There we go. I'll just put it all down. There we go. Okay. Now it's not going to scare me as much, I don't think. Okay. So we can swipe down. We can see Telstra, 90%. It's almost 3 a.m. That's completely fine. Uh, scrolling down again. Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, flashlight, brightness, battery saver, do not disturb, airplane mode, location, hotspot, sound, and nightlight. So yeah, there's not a lot going on in here. But I think I might have to do this, though, so you can see what's going on. I'll probably be using a combination of both the keyboard and touch, but we'll see how we go. We just swipe away the notification just like that, and back to the start. Uh, so if we touch and hold, okay, can't do wallpaper changes or anything like that. That's okay. So let's try the customizable key. What's that going to open? Nothing? No? Okay. Maybe we have to set it first. So holding down star will actually clear all the background applications. So if you hold it, your mobile has the best state. Thank you. Press menu. Call history, messaging, contacts, WhatsApp, Facebook, FM radio, camera, Chrome. It has Chrome. That's good. Calendar, settings, gallery, file manager, clock, sound recorder, calculator, music, Skype, Zello, clear, use the defined key, sound, and TikTok. Okay, so the left key on the D-pad opens up recents as well. Right on the D-pad opens up the notification shade, and obviously power button locks it. Standard Android phone dialer just there. So at this point in time, we're just going to go to settings first and start from there, and then work our way through this. So there we go. It's basically Android just on a very, very small screen. So we have network and internet, Wi-Fi, mobile network, data usage, hotspot and tethering, SIM cards, VPN and airplane mode. 
I'm going to go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Be prepared. Well, usually with MediaTek phones, it makes a noise when it has found networks. Oh, it does support um, 5 gigahertz networks. It said 2.4 gigahertz on the listing, but hey, there you go. Oh, it's gone. Never mind. Oh, no, there it is. And just to clarify, there is no on-screen keyboard. You've got to use just here, which, I mean, is not a deal breaker. If you want to be using a touch screen on a tiny little phone like this, you'd probably be better just going back to 2005 and using this, which I still do have the hang of this, but I'm not as fast as I used to be back in the day on typing on a keyboard like this. Connect to Wi-Fi. All good. Connect to devices. We just have Bluetooth. That's it. Apps and notifications. Let's go through here. Show system. And as always, I like to scroll through here just in case there's anything to point out. You never know. Android Easter egg is straight up the top there. Go through each of these. I'm not really paying much attention just here. I'll see if it has um, Google Play services, actually. I know they said there's no App Store, but it'd be just interesting to see if they've included any of that on here. No, they have not. Oh, well, that sucks. So can you log into a Gmail on this thing? I don't think you can, then. TikTok, can we uninstall that? No, but we can disable it. Dang it. Wireless updates there. Zello is there as well. So yeah, not a lot going on here. Battery, we have 11 hours left on a 2500 milliamp hour battery on a feature phone. That's not a lot, but I will be doing a standby test to see how it does perform anyways. Speed dial. You can set an emergency phone number and do a speed dial. In display, brightness level, nightlight, wallpaper, sleep, font size, and display size. So we'll go to wallpaper, go to wallpapers, and we'll just see what's in here. So we have hiking person, we have people sitting around the bonfire having a good time, then we have person taking a photo on a cliff, and then we have the person hiking again, and then we have... That would just show TikTok on there, didn't it? It did. Let, can we select TikTok? Oh, no, obviously you can't. Let's just have it as hiking man or person. There we go. Sound. Oh boy, I'm not going to play any sounds just yet, don't worry. Uh, but the media volume's all the way up there. I'm just putting it down to there. Just so then I don't get scared again. Phone ringtone is default ringtone. But... Oh, it's got bass to it. Other sounds, all that sort of thing. Sound enhancement, what have we got? Best loudness. Oh, no best order, just best loudness. Storage, 8 gig internal memory, 3.34 gig used. So you don't have a lot to play around with, but chuck a micro SD card in here and you'll be all good to go. Security and location, screen lock, we can have swipe, pin or password, no face unlock, nothing like that here. Very simplistic, just use the keypad to unlock it or just swipe up and there you go. Might be easier if you did set a pin though, because if it's going to be in your pocket, the touchscreen may be a little bit sensitive and just sort of unlock on its own. Within system, we do have languages and input. IME is listed. Can we actually set a virtual keyboard to come up? Uh, well, it's, it's there, but we can't select it. I don't know, it just would have been nice to have that option, I guess. Maybe you can enable it somewhere, but at the moment I don't really see it happening. Wireless update, the model, Android version, security patch level is 2019. Hopefully there is an update that comes through for this. Baseband version, kernel version, build number, and that's pretty much it. In SATOS, there's just the IMEIs and serial numbers. That's all good. Uh, Android version, we can... Go on, let's enable it. There we go. Oh, um, uh-oh. Oh no, he's fine. Yay. Wee. I'll enable developer options while I'm here as well. There we go. Make it seem to run a little bit faster by just putting the window animations down a little bit, unless they're already down to zero. Well, they're down to 0 0.5, so I'll just leave it like that. All right, come to whilst update. Is it going to be this? Yep, there it is. Come on, give us an update, please. It's pretty outdated. It's currently 2.5 years outdated. Two and a half years with nothing. This is a brand new phone, don't forget. 
Now, I don't know why they didn't put a later version of Android on this. I mean, I guess Android 8.1, you know, is fairly stable, I suppose, but I just don't understand why they wouldn't have put, like, 9 Go Edition and then simplified it or something like that. Just makes a little bit more sense from my point of view. But look, it is what it is. It's a cheap phone. Since this doesn't have any way to add an account or anything like that, any Gmail or anything, I guess you don't really have to worry about the security patch level. This thing can basically just make calls and take some photos, play some sounds, and that's really it. Sucks that you can't add Gmail on here. It would just make sense to have Gmail on here, but obviously not. Oh well. AGM has also updated me and told me that in regards to emails, that the only way to get emails working on this phone is to download an APK file through the browser and then install it on the phone. For most general consumers, downloading an APK may seem a little bit iffy. I mean, in context, it seems simple to just go on the browser and download an APK, but for people who want an option to add email straight out of the box, you don't have that here. But I will go over this later during the conclusion. Well, at this point in time then, I'll give this phone a call and see what the call quality is like. So, so this is the earpiece quality on the AGM M7. It is very, 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 very loud and very, very, very clear, so that's very, very good. good. I said very, very a lot of time doing, doing that. that. And, and the microphone on the AGM M7 sounds a little something like this. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Well, from what, what I can hear, it sounds pretty clear. clear. Uh, hopefully there's no interference or anything like that, so everything's good. Also, during the phone call, in the little options there, it did show to start recording, so you can record phone calls if you wanted to. Alright, so app-wise, call history is going to show the call history, messaging, nothing going on, contacts, just the ones that are on the SIM card. We have WhatsApp, which is going to want us... To, oh, God, look how pixelated that is. Uh, that's going to want us to sign into Facebook. Facebook is going to want us to sign into Facebook. Uh, FM radio, do we have to plug in... Oh, we have to use the headphones. Can we play it on the speaker? Okay, what's playing on Australian radio at 3.11 a.m. on 101.1? Virgin Australia's Mead Re SA More Sale. Fly to Adelaide from as low as $79 for more whining and more dining. Well, yep, that works. You just have to use the Type-C adapter, of course. I was going to bump the volume all the way up just then, but I figured I'll leave it when we get to the speaker test. Let's open camera, actually. That's very basic. No autofocus, no nothing. There you go. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it'll be fine. It'll be perfectly fine for just normal... Jesus. Stop scaring me, phone. I will take some photos and videos with the camera. I'm not going to do them now because it's 3am. So I will do a quick jump cut and splice in the photos and videos that I take with this device. And uh, we'll come back. Okay, you've just seen the photos and videos that were taken with the AGM M7. You're probably wondering right now, where is the audio for the video test s'mores? What, what happened to that? So I've had time to contact AGM and ask them, what's going on with the video audio? Uh, after a factory reset, it didn't work. Uh, trying settings and all that sort of thing, nothing sort of worked. Nothing made the videos 
have any audio. AGM said that their technical staff is planning to arrange an OS update and the problem will be solved soon. So at the moment, you can take basic photos with this and it's gonna be okay, no autofocus of course, but if you plan to take any videos with this, you're not gonna have any audio whatsoever. And just to make sure, the microphones do work on this phone. It's just some sort of a bug with video recording and the audio, I'm not too sure. AGM knows about the issue, so hopefully they do release an update to get it fixed. And while we're talking about the subject of updates and stuff, I did ask AGM as well if this is going to get an update to a later version of Android, and they said that the phone will receive OS updates and security patches in the future to solve the problems that our users met. AGM has also updated me and told me that Android 9 and Android 10 will not be available for this device, so it will be stuck on its current Android version, and they don't have any intentions on upgrading it in the future which for a budget cheap feature phone is not that bad, but I just thought I'd ask them to see if it would eventually get an OS update and unfortunately it won't. So there you go, that's why there was no audio in the camera test. Now you know about the updates and stuff, so let's keep moving along with this video. I'd also like to splice in this little bit about the battery life of this phone. Over 30 hours, it dropped from 100% to 63%. This is with Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on, and an active SIM card in the phone. AGM did say to me that it will last 13 days standby with no Wi-Fi, no mobile network, or anything like that in the phone. So battery life isn't too bad. For a feature phone like this anyways, you can pretty much almost get two days usage out of this before you'll need to charge it again. And as for charging this back up, I did use a Samsung fast charger, and it went from the 62% mark to 100% within about an hour and a half or so. I did not test the included charger with this phone as it was only just a standard one. I thought I'd try an actual fast charger to see and that was the results. I mean, when you go to bed, just put it on charge, go to sleep, and they wake up the next morning and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's jump onto Chrome and let's type in AGM M7. I'll just touch the screen, there we go. Okay, so AGM space M7. There we go, enter, 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 this one, no, I'm oh, okay, I'm confused, oh, so you just click that, and there you go, there we go, cool, there we go, it's a battery, <laughs> uh, oh, there it is there, okay, I'll go onto the website and have a look at it, so there we go, there is a little promotion thing going on there, if you wanted to have a look on AGM's website. I will link AGM's website down in the description below as well. Once again, it's not an affiliate link. You can just go on there, have a bit of a browse if you want to. But yeah, Chrome is fine on this. If you want to just quickly search up something, it's going to be more than enough. Thankfully, it's Chrome and not just the standard generic browser, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you can either use the touchscreen or you can just use the keypad and just go wee and then go wee back up again. It's up to you, whichever way you want to use. But in the browser though, you've kind of got to use a combination of both the touch screen and the keypad, because you press that, you've got a new tab. So you go to that, and then you've kind of got to try and work out, okay, well, how do I get to there? You just open up the new tabs. So you've pretty much got to go like that to start going. So you've got to use a combination of both. It is a little bit fiddly, but I suppose you will get used to it in time. But for the speed of the browser, I reckon it's not too bad, honestly. Actually, while we're here, let's try YouTube because there's no YouTube on here. We may as well do the YouTube test while we're here and do the Costa Rica video in 4K. So you can't just press that to enter and that's it. It doesn't work. So you do have to come up here to the little search to be able to do it. It's fine. It's all good. All right, well, here we go. YouTube test. Does it have an accelerometer in here? No, it doesn't. Look, I'm guessing that this phone's not going to be meant for someone who's going to be sitting back and watching YouTube videos. If they want to just quickly check something on YouTube just to see a tutorial or something like that, if you're in a workshop or some sort of environment, uh, you can quickly check it. But here it is here, and we're going to be playing it at... We can play it at 720p. Let's try it at 720p. A little tiny screen. And it's buffering. There we go. That's okay. I still don't want to pump that speaker up just yet. Okay, go on. Oh, wait, what? Ooh. So I can't skip. I can't go back. Can't do anything. So it's basically all controlled via the touchscreen once again. Well, YouTube does work at 720p anyways. It does work fine. Um, because it's only on a 240p screen anyways, you're obviously not going to have the full 720p experience. But as I said, it's a 2.4 inch screen. 
you're not going to be using this just for YouTube. This is a feature phone. As I keep having to tell myself, this is not a smartphone. It is a feature phone. It is not as sophisticated as smartphones that I usually look at. Calendar looks like a calendar, I suppose. Yep, nothing special there. Settings we've already looked through. Gallery is just going to show all the photos and stuff. File manager. Let's try and install an application, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, hello, you can. Okay, you can install apps. Nice. Okay, so uh, I managed to install GTA 3 on here. We're going to test that and see how it goes. I mean, I did run GTA 3 on a watch one time, and it was actually kind of cool. I had to use a Bluetooth keyboard to uh, get it to work, but otherwise, it was fine. So we have clock, which will look like a standard clock. So we do have the sound recorder just here. I'll just record me rambling about something and play what I just recorded at half volume. I'll just record me rambling about something. Oh, I'm hyping up the BFG division, aren't I? Calculator? Looks like a calculator. It says it's rad. Once again, you've got to use the combination of a touchscreen and the keyboard for using the calculator. So you can't just sort of do quick maths on here and, you know, do that because, oh, you kind of can a little bit. But no, otherwise, you're kind of limited to what you can do. You've got to then come to here and do that and do that and do this and do that and do that. And there you go. You've done some calculation that I have no idea how I've done. Music's next. But I'm leaving it to last. I'm leaving it to last. Uh, Skype will open up Skype. So you can use Skype on this if you wanted to. Uh, it's obviously not going to be the best quality, but I'm guessing it will do free HD video. It won't be able to do HD video because it's only 240p on here. Zello, which is... Still don't know what Zello is. What is Zello? Is it social media stuff? Oh, it's faster than texting. Yeah, so it's obviously some sort of social media platform, I guess. Uh, clear. Just clears the background memory and that's it. We have the user defined key, which you can choose only four options. You can't add another option to here. So if you wanted to add, for example, I don't know, the browser or something like that to the button, you can't. You can only do push to talk, audio play, camera, LED torch, which I'll probably set that. No, because there's already the torch built onto the keyboard. Uh, so that's kind of pointless. I guess camera. I'll just try that. Yeah, there you go. That's quite fine. Oh, I'm covering the camera, my bad. So sound itself will just open sound preferences within settings. TikTok, we'll just skip over that. That's completely fine. We'll just pretend it's not even there. Uh, but I do have CPU system info and device info hardware installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open device info hardware just to have a bit of a browse, I guess. So there it is there. It is the AGM M7, 240p, MT6739, Android 8.1. And there's just not a lot going on in here. That's to be expected. It is a feature phone. It's not supposed to have much going on, but there you go. And then the system on chip there is the MT6739CW quad core. The system, Android 8.1, 60 hertz screen, uh, memory, 1 gig DDR3, 8 gig internal storage. Back camera says 8 megapixel. Hold on a second. I haven't done the camera test yet, so I'm kind of unsure of uh, what's going on. So I will have to check that. Battery-wise, it's 84%, so that's all good. Sensors, we have a light sensor and a proximity sensor. So there you go. At the start, I said there was no sensors because there was none specified on listing, but there is a light sensor and a proximity sensor. No accelerometer, no gyroscope, nothing. And now I'll go into CPU system info, just for the whole sake of it. Um, it's a Droy AGM M7. Don't know who Droy is, but there you go. Manufacturer is Droy. Board, free me. <laughs> okay. Uh, hardware, all that sort of thing. Yep, all looking standard. System on chip. The system on chip code is free me. Memory, all listed there. RAM is listed there. Screen, 3.4 inches. It's not correct, it's supposed to be 2.4 inches, but yeah, 240 by 320 is QVGA. And not a lot going on here as well. Thermal is quite fine. CPU is at 33 degrees and the battery temperature is at 33 degrees as well. Once again, the sensors, light sensor and proximity. That's it. Cameras, yeah, it comes up as 8 megapixel. That's quite strange, but there you go. Well, I guess it's time we try gaming on the AGM M7. How's it going to go? I have no idea. So uh, let's get this set up and see how it goes. 
<laughs> this is like if GTA 3 was ported to the uh, Game Boy Advance and you had no buttons. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. You can't even read the text. Okay. Alright. Cool. Let's go options and turn the sound off. Display. Let's put everything up to maximum. Okay. Let's go play GTA 3. Hey, Banshee. Man, that speaker, holy moly. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low, but my hands are all messed up, so you better drive, brother. Drive is what I shall do, my friend. Uh, oh, wait. No, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, we can, we can do this. We can completely do this. Hey! <laughs> oh, this is good! Oh shit, shit, I can't control. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, 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 oh shit, oh shit. I just, like, completely failed that. Uh, I couldn't even turn the corner. Obviously, GTA is not meant to be playable on here, but it works. So you can install apps on here, which obviously, installing more apps on here is definitely going to help you. Uh, you can probably put Google Play services on here yourself, maybe. I've done it again. Now everything's fine. If I be really careful, I can control it. Hey. Yeah, I can get the hang of this. Ugh, wait. Shit, 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 shit. I failed again. Um, okay, you get the point of it, GTA 3 works, that's kind of cool. So that is good that you can install additional apps on here, but you've just got to do it manually via the file manager, just install the APK and you should be good to go. It is a bit unfortunate that there is no Play Store, but if you know how to install apps manually, then I guess it's kind of not a big deal. But otherwise, it's time for the speaker test. This is it, folks. This is the point in time where you're going to need to prepare yourselves if you're wearing headphones. Be prepared. Hold on to whatever you're sitting on because this is gonna be really loud. Uh, of course, we're gonna be using Mick Gordon's BFG Division from one of my absolute favorite games of all time, Doom 2016. So let's go ahead and go BFG Division. Okay, so this is on 50% at the moment. It's super, super clear for what it is though. Holy moly. We're already at 101.5 at 50%. Okay, so we got to 101.9 during that test, which is the number that I quite commonly see on phones. However, that was a 50%. We're now going to bump it up to 100%. I think the whole point of this being a really loud speaker is entirely true. So, at 100% volume, this is BFG Division on the AGM M7. Okay, yep, definitely wins the award for the loudest speaker on a phone that I've ever tested. Holy moly, 113.9 decibels. Uh, AGM, well done. Good speaker in this phone, absolutely, yeah, that packs a punch for sure. Uh, you will never miss a call. That is a definite pass from me. Uh, obviously, at 100% volume, it does get a little bit distorted, as to be expected, but uh, at 113, let's just say 114 decibels, that's fine. You can probably leave this, you know, two suburbs away and you'll still hear it. Okay, so at this point in time, we've basically looked over all the features of this phone, but as I said during the unboxing of the video, I wanna test those JBL Bluetooth headphones out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and we'll see how they go. And then we'll continue on with the conclusion, durability test and teardown for this. 
Alright, it's now time to test out the JBL AGM Bluetooth earphones that were included in this. The wire will go around your neck and then you've got the little buttons on the side to control it. They do have a bit of weight to them. And while they do say that they're waterproof, I'm not too sure of the certifications. But if you do just have the little charging port closed, you should be fine. With these getting a bit of water on them or a bit of sweat while working out, should be fine. But I'll go ahead and power these on. So I'm just going to hold it up to the microphone and hopefully you can hear it. And then I'll power it off. Power off. There you go. So it does tell you power on, power off. But I'll just put these on quickly. That's actually a really solid fit. I'll splice in a little video of what they look like in my ears just here. Alrighty, that's what they look like in my silly ears. They're a pretty comfortable fit. They're not going to be going anywhere. And the remote's just here. I'm not sure if the remote goes there or the wire goes there or over. I think it goes here. It should be fine. So they are a very tight fit in my ears. The ear tips themselves are fine, it's just that little yellow gasket that goes around that's just securing it in my ear. And basically, I can barely hear myself talking and there's no audio playing. So let's go ahead and pair this to a phone and see how it sounds. So on my iPhone just here, I'll power these on. So you've got to hold power and keep holding it for it to say pairing mode activated, and then it does come up as AGM. All right, it's told me they're connected, which they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my music and test them out. So I've got BFG Division here. I've turned the volume to halfway just so it doesn't blow my eardrums out. So I'll go ahead and just play this and see how it sounds. Just make sure the remote works. Yep, there you go. Bit of bass there, a little bit muddy. I can barely hear myself talking at the moment. I mean, they're not too bad. For free earphones anyways, they're definitely not that bad at all. I'll bump it up to max. Oh, okay. Yep. So once you start hitting the maximum volume, it starts to get really, really distorted and sounds pretty bad. But for free earphones, these are pretty good. For just normal day-to-day -day use, they will be fine, but I will test these out battery-wise and splice in a little note just here to let you know how they lasted on battery. I know they take a while to charge up because I had them on charge for about two hours and then they were good to go, but hopefully I get at least four or five hours out of these, but I'll quickly do a mic test on these to see how they sound. All right, this is the microphone test on the JBL AGM earphones. This is what it sounds like. Hopefully it doesn't sound too bad, but I can't really tell because I can't hear it back right now, but hopefully you can hear it and it's not too bad. All right, this is the microphone test on the JBL AGM earphones. This is what it sounds like. Hopefully it doesn't sound too bad, but I can't really tell because I can't hear it back right now, but hopefully you can hear it and it's not too bad. They're okay. I'm not going to be nitpicky. That microphone is more than enough. It will do. These earphones, they will do. Now, I did just look up the pricing for the dock for this phone. And it's only $10 from AGM's website. So I reckon what they should have done, instead of including the earphones as a bonus, maybe they should have included the dock as a bonus. It just would have made a lot more sense to me. But you do get these for free. And if you need the dock, it is only 10 bucks. So it's not that bad after all. All right, and here we are at the durability test for the AGM M7. Everything is all working. The back cover is securely on. All the ports are all closed. Just make sure everything's all good. And it all is good. Are we playing BFG Division once again? I'll play it. There we go. We'll just leave it for a bit, let it play BFG Division, we'll come back. Let's turn the volume up while it's in there. The sync has become bassy now. There you go. So at the moment, it's all good. The speaker's a little quiet. The touchscreen stopped responding there for a second, but that's because there was water on it. Otherwise, this is all good. Just give it a quick scrub-a-dub like that, and it should be all good to go, and that it is. But as for the durability test for the AGM M7, you can dump it in water, leave it there, come back to it, and it should be all good. You just gotta make sure all the port covers are closed and it's playing on its own for some reason. It might be a little bit iffy because it's been submerged in water, but anyways, we're gonna continue on and go for the drop test. So here we are for the drop test of the AGM M7. Everything is all working still completely fine. 
no problems at all. AGM has told me to be violent with this. So that is what I'm going to do. They told me that the back cover may come off during the test, which is to be expected because it is a removable back cover. But I'm just gonna go ahead and just drop it from certain heights and see if we can damage the glass and the exterior. So here we go, we'll just drop it from about waist height. They also said the speaker grill may get damaged as well. All right, face down. There we go. They did say that that would happen. Now I'll just throw it up a little bit in the air and just let it fall down and see what happens. Yep, okay. So it's still all good, it's just that the battery fell out. I'm gonna drop it from about eight feet high, straight down to the ground and see what happens. Still all good, once again, battery flew out of it. So I'm gonna do one last test with this. I'm just gonna throw it and we'll see if it damages it. But otherwise, it's still all in fairly good nick. Nothing's really happened. All right, here we go. And it's fine. Took damage up there. Because of all of this surrounding the screen, it's hard for the glass to actually get damaged because when it's landing on concrete, these are hitting the concrete first and not the screen. Go ahead and power it on and see if it still works. Which it all does. All is functioning, all the buttons are still working. No problems here. The exterior is a bit damaged, the speaker grill didn't get damaged. So I would say for the durability test of the AGM M7, well the drop test anyways, it survived. Two tests in, pretty good. The last test I'm gonna do is just light it on fire and see what happens. Um, and then otherwise we'll tear this down and have a look at the insides. But so far, this is turning out to be a fairly rugged device. Just one more drop for the whole sake of it then. There we go. I tried to break the speaker grill, but no. It got a little bit scuffed up and then that's it. So I'd say that the AGM M7 has passed the test. As I said, just one more test and then we can tear this down. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I submerged this and threw this around. So I just wanna see if the speaker is now back to normal. Yep. Yep, it's all back to normal. But while we have it here, I wanna do a quick burn test. I guess being a huge fan of Jerry Rig everything, I guess this is a bit of a nod to his videos, but except I'm kind of not gonna be burning the screen like that. Well, I can, I can do that but my lighter just died, I think. That's all right, we know about the screen, but I'm doing what AGM told me to do and set fire to the phone. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Oh, there we go. Well, since the whole thing is made out of plastic, obviously if you kind of put this in a fire, the casing is gonna to start to melt and all that sort of thing. So obviously it's gonna survive in hot and humid environments, but if you're gonna be using this on an open flame or something like that, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. Well, I think for this durability wise, it passes. You can burn this, you can throw it, you can drop it in water it's gonna survive. So at this point in time, I think we should tear it down and have a look inside of this. So let's power it off and have a look inside of the AGM M7 and see what's going on in here. Especially this. I did notice that there's two pins just here that go unused, as there's no context on this little battery cover here. I'm actually not too sure of what they would be used by. So from what it looks like here, there's a couple of screws that hold it down just here, but these ones at the top here, I'm not sure if these screws are just decoration pieces or if they're actually screws. So I'll just go ahead and Oh yep, no they are actually screws. Oh there you go, I thought they were decoration. So lifting the back cover off reveals, there you go. Our motherboard is just here. But the actual speaker itself is built into the rear plastic. And there is a waterproof gasket that does go around this to obviously protect this from any water getting inside of it, which it has done the job. Let's take this motherboard out and have a closer look at it. Okay, so you really have to be careful with doing this because the screen is still attached to the main board and is soldered down into place. So if you do end up cracking the LCD of this, it's probably just cheaper to buy a replacement phone instead of getting this one repaired. But we can see the codes on the LCD just there, like so. The front camera does have a code just going along there like so, and it says F cam just there, which would mean front camera. The other camera's flex ribbon is soldered down to place just there. There's also no code for the rear camera as well, which I wanted to have a look at because it says in the spec apps that it's an eight megapixel one and it does take eight megapixel shots so I'm not really sure what's going on there. And just lifting this screen up, we can see there's the keyboard there, as well as the little microphone just there. But the glass and digitizer still stays attached to the phone's body with some adhesive. 
but you can also see the earpiece just at the top there as well. At the bottom is the Type-C USB port. There's not a lot really going on here for this motherboard. Everything you want to see is right there. We know the specs of this, but if we want to see the specs even further, it just shows them right there. It just shows the CPU being the MT6739 VCW, and we know it's only one gig of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. At this point in time, it's still alive. It's a bit fiddly trying to put this back together, especially with these flex ribbons and stuff just here, but I think it should be all okay. Yep. Yep, it's all still good. Whew. Thought I might have killed it. All right, so the last thing we need to look at is the speaker. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out, and we're going to see how big this thing is. We can lift it out just like so. There is a rubber ring around that area to stop water from getting in, but of course water got in through the speaker grill, so... That was to be expected. Now at this point in time, it seems to be all in an enclosed space and I don't really want to destroy this speaker. I'm going to try and pull this apart somehow without destroying it. It looks like I can probably pull this grill off, which that is the case. There we go. Oof. That's a big speaker. Just as a bit of a reference, there's an SD card right there next to it. It's about the size of an SD card, a little bit bigger. But I do want to try something. I'm going to put these screws back in, but I'm going to leave that speaker grill off. So I'm going to play BFG Division once again, without this being on, just to see it bouncing around. That's all I want to do. Okay, it kind of didn't do what I thought it would do. But regardless though, this is a beefy speaker and probably one of the best I've ever tested. Well, I'm going to go ahead and now put this back together properly and then I guess we can do a conclusion on this phone and call this one a video. Well, here it is. It's all back together. It's all tightly sealed. You can see it's battle scars of what it's went through. But it did go through quite a lot and it did survive. So I've got to give credit to this. But I think it's time that we finally get to the conclusion of this AGM M7. For the current $99 US asking price for a phone that survived being dropped, thrown, burned, drowned, having one of the most powerful speakers in a phone that I've tested, and just being a feature phone that strips away a lot of the features of modern smartphones, honestly, it's not that bad. Obviously, those are the positives for it being rugged with the very solid build quality. Yeah, it's solid. The powerful speaker, support for dual 4G SIM cards, running Android while being simplified, but giving you the option to install additional apps if you need to, and its offerings for a feature phone, including those free JBL earphones in the box, all of which I've went into detail within this review, and I think you all get the general idea with this phone's standout features. But I just want to say again, this speaker is an absolute beast, and it genuinely scared me when I got that notification during the review. It's loud, it's waterproof, and it's one of these things that make me recommend this phone. However, there are a couple of things that do put this down a bit. However, we really have to take into consideration the price tag for this. So the first thing is the simplified Android. While it works well for the most part, there are times where you can't just use the keyboard. You have to use both the keyboard and the touchscreen. For example, in Chrome, you need to use both in order to actually use this as a functional web browser. As demonstrated with the review, you sort of are going all around the place, so you've got to tap and then start typing with the keyboard. So I can see this being a bit of an issue for some people having to use both, but that's why they've included the touchscreen to help with the functionality of the phone. But it could have been tweaked just a little bit more so then the keyboard could be used for pretty much everything. Look, it's not a deal breaker and it's only in a few applications that this will happen. Next up is with this not having any Google services like a Play Store or even having the option to add a Gmail or even an email, with a feature phone, most people would probably just want to have their emails on here to quickly check as a secondary phone or just something like that. But to get emails working, you would have to have a Play Store on this phone or else you'd have to resort to installing an APK file from the internet to get an email client on the phone. This may seem a bit confusing to some, especially for a general consumer. If it just had the option to add an email account in settings straight out of the box, then it would have been much easier. So now let's talk about the updates and patches next. While AGM said that there will be an update for any problems that users meet, including the audio not working with video, this is stuck on Android 8.1 and will not be moving from that. AGM has no plans of updating the OS to another major one. I think it would have been good to have a slightly higher version of Android, but there may be some compatibility issues with the system on chip or for it not to be used with mainly a keyboard. Updates are an important thing on phones, but with this just being a feature phone and not a full-on smartphone, 
I guess it can't be expected to get a big update, but instead just a few small ones here and there that AGM do plan on releasing in the future to fix some of the issues. Just a minor thing, instead of the free earphones, I think maybe the dock should be included by default, just so then if it's in a rough environment, it needs to be charged, it can be just docked and you can leave it to charge for a bit. Otherwise, you've got to purchase it separately. As I said, it's only 10 US dollars at the moment from AGM themselves, so it's not too bad. Lastly, just another nitpicky thing from me. The easy key on the side should have an option to be assigned to opening any app on the phone and not just these predefined ones here. But I guess for a feature phone like this, these options are more than enough. Maybe in a future update, they may add some more options or give you a list of applications like on the Doogee S86 where you can just choose anything and open it up with just a single click or double click of this key. Otherwise, for $99 US, if you need a phone that's going to have at least two days battery life, be fairly indestructible and treated pretty rough, and you only need it for calls, texts, a bit of internet browsing, and as pretty much a portable speaker, then this will definitely do the job. The premise of this feature phone is good, and it has some good things going for it, but with email missing out of the box and some bugs, it's not perfect by any means. But the experience for this phone has been pretty reasonable, and I am glad that it did survive all those durability tests. There are a lot of feature phones that are on the market currently, but I don't really take a lot of interest in them, so I'm not really sure how this would rank up with a whole heap of other feature phones. But for me, this should be one of those ones that do stand out within the feature phone market for its price, its ruggedness, and for its intended audience, this may be a phone to look at for sure. And that is pretty much it. I think I've pretty much went over all the features and specifications about this device. If I have missed out on anything, let me know in the comments below. But I do hope this in-depth review is more than enough for people who are interested in this phone to get a good idea of what this can and what this cannot do. And while the runtime of this video is a little bit scary, you do have the timestamps within the description, pinned comment, and integrated into the video so you can skip along if you've come here from a Google search and you just want to see the specs or how the speaker performs or something like that, you can skip along. That's all good. But a massive thank you to AGM for contacting me and sending me this phone out to review. I really do appreciate it. As I said, the last time there was a feature phone on this channel, it didn't really go as well. So I wanted to just start again. And with AGM offering me this phone, I thought it'd be perfect to start again test it out. And they kept in regular contact with me in regards to the issues that I was facing on the phone. So a big thanks to them for giving me the opportunity to look at this phone. But if you want to take a look at the phone, there is a link in the description below. It is not an affiliate link. It is just a link to the phone on AliExpress. So if you click that and purchase it, I'm not going to make anything from it. And you are not obliged to click that link at all. It's just there for your convenience. If you want to just go quickly have a look at it, that's fine. Or if you want to just Google search it, that's absolutely fine as well. And just to save you from going onto Google, AGM's website is down there as well. So feel free to have a look at their other phones, their specs and pricing. And if AGM's happy with this review, maybe they might send out another one for me to review. As their products are mainly rugged devices, it would be interesting to get a more pricier one and do a durability test on it and see how it goes. But anyways, folks, that is the in-depth review for the AGM M7. I hope you did enjoy this for what it was. If you managed to watch this video in one sitting, then you are an absolute legend, and thank you very much for that. But I hope I didn't drag anyone down doing two rugged phone reviews in a row. It's just that I happened to be offered two rugged phones at the same time, and they both arrived at the same time. So here we are. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for the ongoing continued support as well. I always appreciate that. Thanks so much once again. And as always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video. Sorry there was no Ripley in this video. I'll make sure in the next video you'll get to see more of Ripley. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.